From last time, uh, we've seen uh, the ultrasonic sensor connected to the ESP32 board, and now we will make the connection through the ESP32 breakout board. This board is the ESP32 breakout for the servo motor and the other sensors to be connected to the ESP32 because it looks very odd for you to be able to connect it to these pins. So we have a breakout board that has each pins mapped out here and then we are able to make the connection. So let's go ahead and plug the ESP32 board to this board. Before that I unplug the one second. Before that I'll just unplug the uh, power supply from the ESP32 board and then make the connections. Right. Okay. So once this is done, we are good to plug the connections. There's a small switch here, but this doesn't turn on or turn off primarily because it's powered by the USB here. And in case you want to power on this particular board, you can power on by the lithium ion battery that we have and all this. And all you have to do is connect the ESP32 board with the power supply, the battery. Okay, now you'll see all the three LEDs on the board turns on. And with this switch turned off, everything turns off. Okay, this switch turns on. Great. Now let's go ahead and connect the ESP32 board with the power supply. That's the USB cable. And let's program this to make connection to the ultrasonic sensor. From there, we will go ahead and make connections to the servo motor. So I'll quickly make the connection to the sensor. It says VCC. Let's just bring it closer. Okay, you can very closely see VN 23, 22 and ground. So that is the pin where we will connect the ultrasonic sensor. We'll quickly make the connection from ultrasonic sensor, VCC, trigger, echo and ground. So the ground goes to ground pin. The echo goes to pin number 23. VCC goes to V in and then trigger goes to pin number 23. So since we've already uploaded the code, let's go ahead and see if our code is something that's working. I'll upload the code that we had uh, well i mean written last time so once we upload the code we are ready to check this on the serial monitor so you see distance is 36 that's the distance from the camera and as in when i'm making my hand go closer to the sensor you'll see that the distance varies All right, okay, now that the sensor is working, connected to the ESP32 breakout board, I am now going to uh, move to the next part of the code, that is to connect the servo motor to the uh, breakout board. Now, for this to happen, uh, we will have to go ahead and uh, make some uh, new code. So I'll create a new code here and uh, save it as ESP32 test. Yeah, so I will save it as servo motor. Okay, and this is going to be my code. And before that, we start with hash include servo 
dot h. So this is one important library required for us to use the servo motor with the uh, microcontroller board. Now I'm writing the code which is very similar to that you would write when you will have you have an Arduino board. Uh, if there are any changes uh, or if there are any errors, we will change replace this servo library with a ESP32 servo library. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, mention here. So before that, I have to declare. So I'll say servo my servo, or I can also say right leg servo. All right. Okay, I have defined a new servo called right leg servo. I will say right leg servo dot attach pin number 27. Now why is it that I have attached pin number 30, 27? Is because the pin here is pin number 27. The pin that is, the three pin that we see here, the first servo motor is pin number 27. And I will go ahead and write the code to say, um, right leg servo dot right value 180 degree okay that's it so this will ensure that the motor rotates to 180 degree and let's go ahead and upload the code there's a great chance that the this is going to be an error telling uh, this particular library supports only an avr samd boards uh, not the ESP32 board. So let's go ahead and install a new library here. In sketch, include library, manage libraries. Yeah, here I would create a uh, search for a library called ESP32 servo. ESP32 servo. This is a very important step uh, for us to uh, be able to do. So this is the library. If it's not already installed, please click on install and install this library. This is by Kevin Harrington. ESP32 servo. Okay, so what I have to do here is just replace this with ESP32. Uh oh, okay, let me just check the library name. What is the library name? ESP32 servo. Okay, ESP32 servo.h. Okay, the library is ESP32 servo.h, and then the rest of the things remain the same. And I'm ready to upload, compile the code. Let's compile the code and see if everything works well. Awesome, there is no error in the code, so which means this library is accepted. So let's make the connection with the servo motor. I have the servo motor here. I will show it to you up close. So this is the servo motor, the MG90 servo motor that all of you have. There are three pins on the servo motor. The three pins on the servo motor. Brown is negative, red is positive, and orange is signal. All right. So where where did the orange pin goes to pin number twenty seven, red goes to V in, and the uh, brown goes to ground. Same connections need to be made on the servo breakout board. So pin number twenty seven. V in and ground. So I'll make the connections similarly. Yeah. So once the connections are made, you see how the connections are made. I'm ready to upload the code to my ESP32 board and check the servo motor working. All right, I'll, I'll create, put a servo horn so that it's visible for you when the servo motor rotates. Okay, now let's go ahead and upload the code. I will upload this code. I just have to save it.
Now that the code is uploaded, you see that the servo motor is now rotated to 180 degree. Um, I will change this in such a way that I will say, I'll change the code. I'll create a delay of say two seconds and then I will change this value to zero. So I want the motor to swing between zero and 180 and I'm uploading the code. So now once it's done uploading, you'll see that the servo motor rotates from 0 to 180 and 180 to 0. And there's a two second delay between each of these functions. So the servo motor itself takes a while to move from one angle to another angle. So you need to give sufficient delay for it to respond. That's because of the speed of the motor. These are not high speed servo motors they're not very swift, they take time to respond. I mean, they take time to get to the position. With this, you are able to control servo motor. Now you can go ahead and attach few other servo motors to the same code and say, uh, the left leg servo is connected to, say left leg servo is connected to pin number 12, okay? Pin number 12. That's, that's exactly what's present on the board, for number 12. And you can go ahead and connect the other servo motors. And then you can make a combination of the servo motor direction to be able to uh, control the servo motor. Now you can combine this particular code with the ultrasonic sensor code and say when the distance is less than 20, you want the servo motor to be at zero. When the distance is more than 20, you want the servo motor to be at a different angle. So we're gonna do that now. We're gonna, I'm gonna first save this particular uh, code, telling uh, control S, servo motor done. Now I will do a save as and say this is servo motor ultrasonic sensor, okay? I'm gonna copy the ultrasonic sensor code I'm gonna copy the ultrasonic sensor code from the previous uh, assignment file open recent so motor ultrasonic sensor yes this is my previous code ultrasonic sensor i'm going to copy this one by one And then white setup is this. Okay, so this part is done. And then white loop is this part. I'll copy this and put this down here right before, okay? Now let's do a bit of uh, changes in the servo motor where I will have to check what's happening. So once this is done, I have my servo detect uh, connected. I have done to measure. I don't need all of these things. I'm going to delete this from the code. Float actual distance and all of that. I will remove this delay so that I don't have a uh, issue. I will also going to remove this. Now I'm going to say if distance Oh, that's act distance. If act distance is less than 
20 then I want the servo motor to go 180 degree else I want the servo motor to be at 0 degree that makes sense so I have the servo motor if the distance is less than 20 servo motor goes to 180 degree if the distance is greater than 20 the servo motor goes to 0 degree and I can now upload so give a small delay delay of 500 and then upload this code now let's go ahead and see how my ultrasonic sensor and the servo motors behave with respect to the connection I'm gonna check the cam view only okay now that the uploading is done the moment I take my hand out the servo motor is at 180 degree the moment I bring my hand closer to the sensor you'll see that the sensor the servo motor changes All right, with this, uh, we have got to understand how our code, uh, how we have written our code with a combination of servo motor and ultrasonic sensor. So once uh, you've been able to do this, do let us know. And if you have any questions, uh, reach out to us and we'll help you out. Okay, thank you. That's it for today. And uh, hope you're able to make the best of this particular code tutorial. Okay. Bye-bye.